The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. It's Brian Caprice, and this is June. Or I'm sorry, June. I wish it was June. It's July 8th. Uh, this is your Monday morning market breakdown. I um, want to wish everybody a – I hope you guys had a good 4th of July. Um, I didn't have my kids this time. They were at their mom's, but uh, the baby loved the fireworks. She wasn't scared of them at all, uh, for those that are tracking little ones. And uh, it was a good time had by all. Um, we had a couple of days of downtime as well, and I hope you had the same thing and you were refreshed. Um, watching the markets last week was awesome, especially uh, you know late in the market. Um, it would, it's what I would call the dog days of summer, if you guys know what I'm talking about there. Um, people are going on vacation. Uh, as I mentioned last week, we expected that there's going to be lower volume, but that really led into the fact that markets can move more. You know, uh, When there's less money out there, there's less fights. Um, again, what we saw last week were all-time highs in the market. Uh, it's funny, you know, you still hear things that are, you know, oh, the markets aren't good and, and, you know, recession this and everybody's bad, but yet the markets are going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. So uh, it's kind of one of those things you got to love lazy trends. They're great when you're a trader, uh, jump on those things and ride them. But um, again, this week is a little bit more, I'd say timid, you know, a little bit more shy. Uh, we had not many news releases last week, but it's even less this week. So we'll go through that. Um, for anybody that's new here, welcome. Um, Give you a little breakdown of myself just so you know who I am. Uh, my name is Brian Caprice. I'm the president and CEO of Keep Trading Simple. And uh, our main mission is to really kind of simplify trading. Um, we don't believe in 18 hours a day of sitting in front of a computer and looking at things. It's uh, what we try to do is remove all the distractions and really just kind of dive into what you need to focus on, uh, predominantly price action. Um, occasionally, you see me throw an indicator up there to kind of confirm what we're looking at already. Uh, but I'm a believer in a set and forget mentality. If you guys have heard things like that about getting in there, Finding a, an if this, then that situation and uh, letting it, you know, do it by itself. You know, I don't need to sit here and babysit it. I have technology and, you know, again, you do too. So, you know, everybody can trade this way. Um, trade, you know, created a couple of different things using price action, the 30 minute trader, which is a Nadex course, as well as a five minute binary course. And again, these are for people that trade full time, again, using that set and forget mentality. Uh, my outlook on the markets, just so everybody understands where I'm coming from. Um, I started as a trader back in 2000. So I've been doing this for quite a long time. Um, did it for years, found my success, found my niche, uh, ended up becoming a financial advisor after that, working for one of the big three banks and realized that it was nothing like I thought it would be. You know, I thought these were the people that, you know, they were the people that we would send our money to. They had the most information, but I, I learned absolutely nothing about trading on the inside except what they wanted, you know, basically my clients to follow. And I didn't stay there long. I went back at it into the private sector and I've been teaching people how to trade since that time. Um, love it. Um, that's really my true passion in life. Uh, besides my family, they're my kids. Uh, the baby's, uh, she's just over one now. She's this weekend. She started taking her first steps. So she does like kind of one and then falls. And then I think we got two and then she fell, but she's starting to get pretty active. And, uh, she picked up one of the boys lacrosse sticks and started playing with it. So that was pretty funny this week. And we got some really, really cool pictures of her, uh, dumping the lacrosse ball out of the stick, um, at one. So who knows, maybe we have a future star there. And uh, again, those are my boys. So with that being said, that's me. Uh, let's move into the risk disclaimer for Nadex. Uh, trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here today is for information and education purposes only. And it should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile, and investors risk losing their investment on any given transaction. However, the design of Nadex contracts ensures investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. Very important you guys understand that I mention it every week. It's one of the things I love most about Nadex, um, just options in general, but Nadex really, really does an amazing job of it. Um, and also, Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. Okay? All right. Let's dive in. So, Typically, what we do is it's we kind of do our top 10. Uh, the birds want to chime in today. They like something on the charts, obviously. Um, so if you hear them, I apologize. Normally, what we'll do is we'll run down the top three events, and I'll kind of run through the news for the week. Now, this week is definitely shy on major news releases. So I still have a top three. I'm going to give you one cautionary um, kind of warning. So going into Wednesday um, at 10 a.m. in the morning, Canada has a lot of news. Okay, There's an over rate, uh, overnight rate. There's the monetary policy. Basically, their equivalent to FOMC. Now, at the same time, there's not really a whole lot going on. Typically, we have kind of U.S. news and Canada news released in tandem. Wednesday is basically three big CAD releases. Overnight rate is not expected to change, but the policy statement is important because, again, Canada is 
a little bit behind us and they have a very interesting situation going on with their economy right now. Okay. Um, at the same time as when Pal testifies, but 10 o'clock, he's just starting. So typically the market's not going to react because he hasn't started talking yet. So that's a good opportunity for us to have a single currency to trade against as far as news goes. Now, Number two for the week, where I think we're going to get some nice, you know, nice movement out of it, would be on Thursday morning at 8:30 a.m. We have CPI month over the month. Now, CPI is a very, very hot number, and the reason why it's a hot number is because anytime you start talking about inflation and prices, those things kind of are what dictates the Fed from raising or lowering interest rates. Okay, now you'll see at the bottom in the red, which I'm sure everybody's looked at. Obviously, FOMC notes are on Wednesday. Um, CPI is a number that kind of they look at. So they already kind of know what the CPI number is going into that talk. But again, the market hasn't had a chance to react to it. They're kind of trying to pick apart what they say. Is it dovish? Is it hawkish? What are they, are they going to raise? Are they going to lower? If they are, when is it going to be? Well, CPI is one of those things that gives us kind of concrete information. And uh, core CPI is actually supposed to go up 0 0.1 um, as far as a couple of the forecasts that I've seen. So that has the potential of moving the markets. Uh, and again, it's at 830. Uh, Powell's still testifying that day at 10. So again, 8.30 would be the time to kind of hit that one. Um, now, Wednesday, early morning release, 4.30 in the morning, if you guys are up or you're West Coasters or you're in another country, um, GDP. Oops, I, I, I copied it twice. I guess the coffee hadn't fully kicked in. There we go. GDP for the pound. Uh, always important, everything that's going on with them, um, whether their economy is good, whether their economy is bad. Uh, this is actually supposed to be a pretty nice forecast number. I mean, when I say pretty good, I'm talking about like a 0.3, not like a 3.0, like what we're having in our GDP increases. But again, any number that's small like that with something as volatile as the pound definitely could give you some fireworks, some movement. Uh, the nice thing about that, again, it's 4.30 in the morning for the East Coasters. But the nice thing about that time frame is there's no U.S. money to kind of counterbalance it. So we, that European session will probably be a really pr pretty nice mover, I expect. Um, and again, that's always nice if you can get one or two nice days out of it for the week. You know, you can you can make your entire week in one day or two days. Okay, um, hit your goals real quick if you can get the right setup, and that has the potential for being it. Now, word of caution at the bottom: FOMC meeting notes. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty. I don't think they're really going to tell us too much. For like what we don't already know, but what we do have to look at is has their tone changed? You know, are they going to give us any information or confirm any information that we'd already thought about the, the interest rate changes? Um, as you know, interest rates are huge, especially where we are with the market right now. Um, obviously, you know, when you raise interest rates, it's bad for your stock market. If you lower it, it's really, really good. Um, and where we are in this political environment. Um, it's there's a couple different factors here. I mean, we saw last week the markets were going on all time high. Why? Because, you know, Trump was like, oh, we had talks better than expected. Well, he can say things like that and, and you know, move the market, manipulate it any way that he likes. But he's also at the same time, you know, he knows what the numbers look like. He's also, you know, we're talking about how the market's too fragile. We're seeing the numbers. We may have to do some rate cuts. Well, you start cutting rates. Same thing. Borrowing becomes cheap and it, you know, it just the stock market goes up. OK. So he's kind of got the perfect storm right now. Um, he's always used the markets as a gauge of how well he's doing. Um, getting ready to start going into the fall and when we start talking elections and things like that and, you know, kind of how to position yourself. I mean, they were actually talking about this last week. I've been saying this for, you know, months, but, you know, they talked about it last week on CNBC. And they talked about how, really, he can just politically maneuver us. He wants to kind of slow this Chinese trade talk down. Like, they can pause everything now, but it's still got to be overhanging. But he's saving all these things. So, I mean, we're talking about interest rate cuts. He can raise it as high as he can. Then all of a sudden, bam, there's no such thing as a trade war with any continent, right? Any country out there, it goes even higher. And then he's like, oh, I doubled the market in my time. And it's really hard to compete, you know, for the other side when you have the ability to say that. Now, again, it's been manipulated the entire time. But so, again, watch the FMC notes. Compile that with the, um, you know, the CPI numbers. And, um, again, there, there's, there's some potential there. Now, I give you a word of caution because I don't think – it's going to depend on the amount of volume in the overall markets, but this could be a chance for you to go and trade the indices, um, get over there on that side and kind of play the reactions. Okay, Like I said, I don't think we're going to get anything new that we didn't already know, but we may get a little bit more further confirmation and we may kind of get a little insight into um, what the CPI numbers are. So again, be a little cautious with that. Um, always like to make sure that we you know preface that a bit. All right. So. With that being said, let's take a look at, you know, those are the top three and the caution. 
Uh, let's drag this in. Let's go over to charts and indicators and look to see what we have going on for the week. Okay. Again, if you're using the site, make sure you always change the time across and then go into your filters. Um, we'll leave medium on because I know it's not a busy week and we'll take the Mexican peso out and then we'll go to weekly view. So I think the weekly view worked there. Yeah. I hit weekly view and it didn't kind of refresh and that shows you how much news there is. Okay, you'll see Monday. Uh -uh. There's just, you know, sorry, Monday. Uh -uh. There's really not a whole lot going on, right? Consumer credit, which really doesn't move the markets too much. Um, you know, there's a little bit of movement this morning, but really not too much, right? Um, just some mediums. Tomorrow, you know, we start off with some Chinese news. And again, Chinese news does have the power to move the Australian dollar, okay? Uh, so, you know, you do have that potential to take on Tuesday morning. But you'll see after that, I mean, you know, the Swiss unemployment rate, eh, really not too much. And and it's picked to be slightly different, but not really a huge mover, even in something like the, the, uh, the dollar Swiss. You may get, you know, 20 pips, maybe 30 pips, but a little bit harder to grab, right? And it's it's obviously pretty early in the morning. Um, if you're a West Coaster, this is much more your time to stay up a little bit late. You'll see CAD housing starts really aren't that big as well. Um, and again, this is, you know, Tuesday, there's really not a whole lot there. Uh, biggest thing is obviously going to be PAL speaking. Um, you don't even see that on this list. But again, a little, little more uh, red, you know, Chinese news at the end of the day. Uh, going into Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday, you'll see that there's a whole lot of PAL news. Now, it's all considered medium. It's, you know, uh, this is that, you know, GDP, that number that we we're talking about. Um, it's considered a high release on some sites, uh, I guess, because of the volume of, you know, how much power the pound actually has globally now. Um, it's less. Um, it's considered a medium release. But you'll see there's a whole lot of stuff going on, right? Trade balances, manufacturing numbers. GDP is going to be the big one. And again, it's expected to be better than what it was before. OK. Um, but again, looking at the three month, it's not as great. It's going to be less than it was. OK, so it's. The monthly uh, is catching up, but the three month is uh, still kind of there. But again, because nothing else is happening, there's no European numbers to counterbalance this or anything. This is a pure G, you know, a pure pound play. So again, nice little opportunity there. And then you'll see going into ten is bam right here. Here's that rate decision again, where it's expected not to move, right? But again, the policy report and any of the statements that are linked with it. And again, it could be a surprise move. If they surprise move us, you'll definitely get some movement in in, in the CAD pair. But Again, it's the statement and the things we're looking for and the fact that there's no U.S. traders really or no no U.S. releases at that time. Watch it. OK, for commodity traders, here's another one you can trade potentially as well is the uh, the oil numbers. We are now into summer oil. You know, I don't know if you guys saw the prices of the pump go up, but um, got to got to love summer oil. And um, again, the inventories, uh, they're expecting it to be down and eh, we'll see with that one. Um, I know I, I've heard some reports that, you know, vacations are are. They've seen a, a decline in vacations this year just because of weather-related issues, which may also put a crimp in this one. So we'll kind of see what that number comes out as. Uh, and then FOMC notes, considered a high release, but because there's not a number associated with it, it's notes, there's dissection, it's what did he say, what are the reactions to it. Again, use a little bit of caution if you have positions on. Uh, particularly if you have profitable positions on, make sure you don't lose your profit because of some type of a whipsaw effect. Okay, now Nadex is great because there's an inherent stop loss included but there's not a fixed number that we can be taken out of a trade on, right? Again, that's options. Um, that may keep you in, but again, you don't want to lose any profit that you kind of have, uh, you know, banked in here. So definitely watch that number closely. Going into Thursday, okay, this is where we have the CPI numbers, right? And you'll see right here, okay, it's considered high and then, you know, minus food and energy, okay? Um, I think that's probably, this is, for me, um, this is a, it's listed as number two on my top three list, but it's a it's right there as far as being a number one. And you'll see is there's a bunch of other things, you know, initial jobless claims, continuing claims, average rates, um, still a lot of things. And then obviously Powell is, you know, going into day three. So he'll be really, really excited to be going into his third day of testimony. Um, <laughs> anybody that wants to do any type of, you know, committees, um, uh, more power to him. I, I guess he doesn't want to, but he has to. But man, talk about a guy under fire and. Uh, yeah, not too fun, right? But a lot of stuff is happening Thursday at 8.30 in the morning, a lot of U.S.-based news and not a lot of news to counterbalance it. Only the uh, new housing price index, which really doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, you know, again, that's not really going to move the markets back and forth. Going into Friday, you'll see Friday is kind of the same thing. It's people at the beach, you know, again, dog days of summer, right? Um, everybody's kind of heading out um, on vacation. Uh, maybe your, you know, your week is almost over, but um, again, the only thing we have is this base or who great count and not really a big market mover. So um, Friday kind of flatlines on us. And again, this is what we see. 
um, going into this is the summer. You know, this is summer trading. Um, got a couple more weeks of it before we kind of pick things up again. Uh, August has the potential to be kind of, uh, you know, the starting kind of launching point. Um, it has been the last couple of years. Um, people kind of getting ahead of, but July is typically, you know, notoriously slow. So we'll take it and, and go with what we got. So let's go to the charts. Um, let's see what we got over here. Uh, let me bring up this other screen. All right, good. So those of you who have been watching, we had talked last week about how uh, this blue box was kind of a kind of a holding pattern for the Aussie Yen. And we said we saw some movement. We popped out of the top. We dropped to the bottom. So last week would have been the first, right? So the first is right here, okay? We saw price open high and it gapped up, right? That Which was kind of a nice little movement. We've seen that here and we saw it in some of the other pairs, right? But it literally pulled right back and kind of, you know, again, if you're a believer in this kind of thing, it's like a rubber band, right? Um, it's kind of the whole Bollinger Band theory. If you guys have ever talked, you know, looked into that, you know, he has an upper channel and a lower channel. What happened is it broke the upper when it pierced. It went all the way down and hit the bottom side and then came back and it, where is it holding? It's right now, it's exactly where we talked about being in the middle of this blue area. And you can see it's almost right at the 50% mark. And I haven't moved this since last week. Um, looking at down on the four hour, you can kind of see the same thing. We had this bounce, this lower bounce. It went lower and then kind of springboarded back up right to where the other gap was. So we had one gap here, right? Here was the first gap. Here is the second gap. Okay, you guys see the second gap candle right here? Okay. Here's the second gap. And what it did is it, it came down, it retested, it came up and went lower. And when we talked about that pattern last week, they a retest, retrace, and then lower. And then it did the same thing. It gapped higher, it retested, went up. And then again, it's still stuck in the same kind of holding pattern. Right around where the gap was last week, right? Um, if you move this back, here was the original gap, right? Where's price? Basically just hovering. Based here, went up, came back down, up, 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 up. So it's still kind of stuck in this sideways holding pattern. And again, not necessarily a surprise. I mean, the ATR on this one did did jump a little bit because we have these candles in here. But again, it's gonna it's gonna drop again. We're only at about 52 pips right now. So not the biggest mover. I was hoping for more of a collapse to come back down in the 74.80 area. Now we had a little bit of a fake, and again, the fake went down down to the initiation of the gap and then kind of flipped and turned on us. Um, unfortunately, this is more sideways than anything else. It's a very kind of small pattern. You guys can see the channeling even on the 30 minute. We're just kind of bouncing back and forth in this channel. And this channel is only about 20 pips, right? 75.60 is down here at the bottom. 75.85 is here. So you're talking about a 25 pip window back and forth. Makes it a little bit difficult to trade because the strikes are 20 pips apart on the dailies. So again, you can trade it on smaller time frames. Uh, Monday is probably not the day to do it. Um, let's look later in the week. Uh, for this one, because we are still kind of sideways, I'm not even looking for weekly positions on there. So just be a little bit cautious with this one, okay? Now, remember, Chinese news will move this. Uh, it does have the ability to do that. So, again, watch for those Chinese news releases. So, let's drop it down to the Aussie dollar. So, Aussie dollar, we had marked off talking about looking for kind of a target back down here, dropping down, right? Well, price dropped in one large, what we, again, we would call a racetrack, okay? When we were talking last week, we were kind of right in here. We we're in a little bit of a pullback, and we said we'd like it to get a little bit higher, and then we'd be, you know, we'd be looking for something, you know, again, to, to shoot back down into this area first. And that's exactly what it did. Um, it turned. And again, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. OK, remember, when we're looking for kind of areas of targets and entries, we are looking for areas of basing and kind of areas of explosion. OK, so the basing area, you guys can see it, is right here. OK, and that's kind of, again, if we were going to take a trend continuation, if this zone was not here, OK, Say this was not here. This was just, this is one candle and it came down and then did this kind of, it just went right through and it didn't pull, have this pull back and retest. We would have been looking to get long here, right? This was an area where it price rallied up, it pulled back and then launched off higher. That would have been a takeoff. So again, that would have been a, a short term area that we were looking to get out of our positions in, right? Now, we were looking for it to go a little bit higher to get short and that's exactly what it did. It came back up, it touched the 70, the 70, 50. And it's dropped all the way down about 100 pips back down. Okay, so this would have been the original kind of, let's see if we got in or not. Um, the entry off of this four hour or this daily position would have been pretty nice because this was one candle down. And let's see, where's the ruler? You guys will see that one candle right here is about 80 pips, right? Well, if you guys look up here on the upper left hand corner, the ATR is only 45. Okay, so by definition, this is considered a racetrack, and it's an area where we're looking for retracements. And that's exactly what it did. It dropped into the daily level of buyers, went higher, and again, this is a 90-pip run, right? Um, oops. 
all the way up, talking about 96 pips, okay, from that entry. Um, it's a little bit less than that. If we go from here to here, it's about 80 pips. So it was an 80 pip back up. It ran exactly into the target that we marked off. And then what did it do? It came all the way back down and crashed into this level of buyers. Uh, you can see it on the lower time frame as well. It went slightly higher. And we mentioned going slightly higher. Um, this was something that we were looking for for retests. Uh, we don't need it. But you guys can see this area, okay, this is where this kind of thing dropped down to, right? This area right here is what we're looking for, is, is what this is. And again, we marked this area off right here. What did price do? It came down in a new spike down, hit the area, went back up again, hit the daily level here, hit the daily, and then went back down and retested it. And now we're kind of stuck. Okay, so again, we've seen kind of this this sideways basing, right? You got to love, and this is the thing, news does a lot of this. News acts as a catalyst in a lot of different ways. This was the, the, this was kind of the new setup, right? Went down, tag, went back up, hit the top side, and dropped back down again. So, you know, what you were really looking to do is you wanted to take advantage of, you know, this you may not have been able to grab, okay? I'm going to mark this off so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, we'll just make it yellow. And we'll change it to four. Yeah, it's good. So this one, again, this was news. You may not have been able to predict that one. Okay, kind of hard right before the zone. Okay, this piece here was predictable. Okay, and again, this is why I'm saying that you got to kind of watch this. And again, you don't need to spend all this time in front of the computer. You could mark these things off. Well, again, this is this is a daily level. This was has been here for days. Okay, you had plenty of time. This was the predictable move, right? back up what did it run into what do we use for a target we use this upper daily zone okay once that daily zone was there we all of a sudden knew that we had a shorting possibility there again there was your entry based off the daily where's your target the last area where we had sellers okay so this is 160 pips that you would have been able to grab out of this thing last week great great movement even in a week that it really didn't move too much because you can see we started the first here and we ended over here so it, it's a Total of about, I mean, we ended here at 20. You're talking about a 40 pip top to bottom week, right? Start to finish. But yet there was 180 pips to be able to grab on the smaller time frame. So absolutely, without a doubt, drop your lower time frames. Even if you're just using a four hour, it doesn't take hours and hours and hours for you to be able to go down and, and be able to grab something like this, where there's, you know, about 180, about 160 pips in, in a pair like the Aussie um, that only moves 45 pips a day. Okay. Great, great movement based off of news using price action to be able to grab this one. Where we are right now, again, seeing this, you know, whenever I see, you know, areas like this, I, I do like it. Again, this is, again, same definition. I just gave you a racetrack thing you got to watch out for. And again, this is price action. Okay. You need to watch out for, see this wick over wick right here. That's what price ran into. That's why it stopped in the middle. Okay. Um, you know, whenever you type to see this pattern on a smart time frame, you'll see it's a pullback. It's kind of, it's exactly what this looked like right over here. And that's what we ran into. So, you know, it, it, it's going a little bit lower. Uh, you know, it's breaking below these, you know, zones. You know, it grounded its way, you know, higher. Nothing spectacular. Um, I think you'll get some movement with some, you know, again, not really a lot of Aussie news this week. But look for the Chinese news, see if we can get another bounce. Um, I, and again, I'm sure people are asking this. Should, it buy, should you be buying it if it goes down here? For me, no, because it's already tested it once, twice. This is number three. And number three and number four is typically where you see the breaks. Um, what I will do though, is again, I mentioned this last week, I will look for a break below a retest and then kind of a collapse down. Um, look for something, you know, kind of a, you know, I look for like something like this. Um, and then look for some type of a retest up and then look for something like that. That's kind of what I'm looking for to the downside. We'll see how it enters the areas and we'll see where it goes. But for me, that's the only thing I'm looking at right now. Um, don't necessarily like this to the top side. Once you hit to here, there's only about 15, 15, 20 pips. So there's not too much there. Um, I like, I'd like it to break out of the channel is this is the buying area. This is the selling area. I like to get out of that area. We'll see where it goes from there. Okay. Um, go over to Euro pound. So, so Euro pound is one of those things. So last week we were right here. Okay. We talked about price had hit this daily zone and we were looking to get short and we were looking for a pattern to get short. Um, and again, here's the, here is the, you know, the first was right. It was the, is the gap down. Okay. So this is one of those situations where we're in a kind of a bearish mindset. We're looking to go short, but at the same time, um, and again, this is where, you know, you see the gap over in this area here. It hasn't done much. 
right? Short and weak, um, it just really flatlined. Uh, it has absolutely no catalyst, no driving power, no nothing. It would be the definition of kind of standing for me on a cliff, right? I mean, you can see it's, you know, it's, it's definitely the angle, right? If your angle, and again, this is about price action, there's your one angle, right? And then you're seeing that we have an angle here, right? Whoops, there. And now we're starting to see that what does the angle look like? The angle looks like this. Okay, you guys see where this is going? And it did it in an area of sellers. So for me, I am still bearish. Um, I don't have an entry on this one. Um, I'm not just blindly in this zone is about, you're talking about 100 pip zone, which I'm not taking on a daily. Um, even here, there's, there's, there's some stuff we got to chunk through. But again, just keep this in mind, what's there. Um, this is something to potentially look at when we do have pound news. And again, we do have a little bit of pound news uh, Wednesday morning early. Uh, GDP. Okay. If GDP is a surprise, which is supposed to be better than what it was last time, uh, the month over month, that could start giving us the catalyst to start driving down the euro and giving us some, some pound strength again, which could start bringing this back down again. And remember, we're right at 90. We're right at kind of a round number anyway, worth in 40 pips of it. So um, even this week, and, I, and again, I'm looking right now, there's really not even any great European news. Um, there is German um, on Thursday. There is German CPI number. Um, it's supposed to be exactly what it was before. Um, yeah. Besides that, there's really no European numbers. Um, I mean, there's Swiss, but that's not going to affect this number. And then the trade balance stuff today was was fine. So yeah. So again, that's where I'm looking at right now. Don't have an entry, but again, just be cautious that we are in this area where we could see uh, you know some some pushback. Uh, looking at your again. So. You guys will see the first is right here. We talked about your yen spiking up into this area on the daily of sellers. We saw that we'd hit here. Um, in actuality, that's what the zone should have looked like because price had retested up to this area already and eaten those orders up. You guys can see it hit on the first and dropped back down again. Now, we were looking for a target in this, this 2150 area with this blue line, and that's where we kind of bounced off of. It did go a little bit lower. Um, if you had drawn... Here's the box that you would have drawn for your targets. Um, there's your targeting box. Okay, and you can see it dinged off the top. Always want to front run it a little bit. And again, um, I'll give it the I'll give it the 15 pips to go to a round number, uh, and that's what it did. Uh, but again, that would have been our target. Um, this wasn't a bad mover. We went uh, here. I'll, I'll do the, the roller for you guys. Again, off the daily, down. You're talking about 180 pips again. Okay, so again, not a bad one off the daily. Okay. Um, Kind of a similar situation since we've bounced off this bottom area. And again, it barely grows the top of it. We have to respect that area that there are definitely buyers still down there. Since that time, though, you can see at least on the four hour, it basically just flatlined. I mean, it, it's the epitome of sideways. Now, it looks great on the 30 minute, right? Um, except when you're here, right? Uh, again, that's late in the week on Friday. Um, we're seeing a little bit of movement. Here is the gap from Sunday. It basically came back up, went lower, and is back up in the same area. So here's where we ended Friday right here. It's at the same spot. So we are definitely sideways on this one. Again, Monday, no news releases. Not really surprised. It's also before market hours. This one's going to need the, um, the U.S. market to come open, and we'll kind of see if we can get some movement with the yen. That's about the only hope right now, but it's a little bit too sideways for me. Um, again, still mark off this lower area. Would I take a buy in this area? Yeah, potentially. Um, you know, again, this area down here at this um, 121, kind of 20-ish area, this was the start of a, a pretty big rally up. Um, Definitely would be looking for that. That would be something I would have on my radar. Again, set an alert for yourself uh, when price enters this 121, say 25 or 121.30. That gives you a little bit of time to get back to the computer uh, if you're not going to sit in front of it. Um, just to kind of check it out, um, see what we have going on, see how it entered. I mean, see if it if it ground down in something like this, like if it was coming down the opposite way, not interested. If it came down or, you know, spiked down into it, then I would be looking for somewhat of a retrace. Okay. Um, not a lot there. Euro dollar, uh, you guys can see Euro dollar was up. And what do we have? Okay. We talked about the first was right here. And we said we were just entering a situation where we had a bit of a racetrack, right? What do we say? We had three days up. We had no wicks. There was your measured move from the prior bit. Um, and we said there's not a whole lot stopping us. And what did it do? It went all the way back down again. And again, the first guys is right here. We said that we had gotten the red. We had gotten basing. And if we had any type of break below this 113.50, we could potentially see a drop. And what did it do? It did. Here was our target line. Look how close we got to our target line. We missed it by seven pips. Okay. 
Um, again, not a bad run to the downside uh, in a week that we you know didn't expect. There's your low. There you go. Another 140 pips to the downside. And again, that's seven strike prices. Um, we're about just under two for um, the weeklies. Um, again, on this one, I am a little bit more bullish. Uh, we are down in this kind of right around where the target area was. Um, it was a very nice spike all the way up. We went from 112 all the way up to 114. Now we're coming all the way back down again to 112. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think right now I am probably more of a bearish mindset, but with what we've seen since, you know, right in here, um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a break. I'm not ready to step into a trade. I want the U.S. market. I want um, traders to come online. Actually, it's funny. Here's the, the green, what we had for the target, and it kind of came down and painted around it. Um, that's the target I talked about the other day. Um, we'll see where this one goes. Um, like I said, you got some, you got, you know, you got some buyers up here. I'm sorry, some sellers up here. Uh, we didn't quite go as low. So we're sideways. We need us money to come in. No news releases today. So we'll see how much us money is out there. Um, one thing I will look for though, is I will be prepared for this. Okay. So here's that level of basin we talked about that we were going to use as a target. Same situation. If price is able to come down and breach this zone below it and then pop back up again like this, breach, touch, and then collapse. If we get the same similar pattern here, that would be something that I, I'm, I'm looking to get into. Um, same as what we talked about here. Here was that zone we talked about, it popped. Uh, and actually this is what we talked about. Yeah, there's the first right there, okay? Breach of the zone, retest, collapse. And that came down to the target, okay? That's why we had this, this wick against the wall marked off. Um, so this one actually unfolded. Quite well from what our analysis was last Monday morning, uh, and again, I'm using for me most of, most of my intraday trades. I'm using four hours my upper time frame. I'm not using the, the daily as often. Okay, um, this is more set up for kind of swing trades. Um, intraday, I'm using this as the large one. All right. Uh, so again, where we are, we need U.S. money. Uh, again, if price comes down to here and bases and then starts to give you a call, you know a confirmation of the top side, like a uh, of course these are the wrong colors here, but uh, if we get somewhat of a green, red, green on this four hour time frame, then yes, I would be looking to take it long back up into this 112, 80 ish area. See where this level of basing is before this big drop. Um, I'd use this kind of cautionary area as a, as a part. Okay. Um, going down to the pound yen. So oh, here was the box that we drew that we said we were going out. We had a bit of a gap. Um, the first third right here. Right. And I said, we finally gapped out of it into a level of basing. And what did it do? It sucked us back in. And here's the upper end of the channel. And we talked about this one going back down to where it started. It did. It went all the way back down to the bottom of the channel before it retraced back up again. So we are on the bottom side of the channel right now. Um, again, no real catalyst on Monday. The, the yen will help us start to move this. And again, it's starting to grind higher. It did run into the wick against the wall or the wick behind a wall right here. You guys will see that um, right here. Okay, that's what turned this one. Um, there was some nice money to be made in this one last week. Right now we're on the bottom side of it, but uh, we need a bit of a catalyst. And this is what we were talking about before. Um, this is that kind of the opposite of what we're looking at with the euro, euro pound. You're seeing this kind of bam, bam, and now it's starting to go sideways, right? Um, hoping that with this one kind of picks up and starts giving us some, a little bit more um, right now though, again, if you wanted to extend this channel out, you could extend it farther. Um, but it has gotten a, a bit bigger. Um, you do need to mark off the top from here to here, you know, from those two sides. Um, side color area. Okay, you do have to be, you know, you're looking at kind of that situation now because we've pushed higher and we've pushed slightly lower. Okay. So what it does is it, it you know, it, your buyer and selling area is just a little bit farther out. Okay. Um, on this one, I would say I'm probably a little bit more bearish, right? I'm, I'm sorry, a little bit more bullish right now. I'd like to see us get a pattern above. Um, you guys can see there was descending wicks here. We did push slightly higher than the first two. Um, if we can continue to hold this green and go higher, then yeah, I'd be looking to take something long on the shorter time frame. Again, don't expect tons and tons of movement out of this one today, but um, you know, we'll see what we can get out of it. Uh, pound dollar, similar pattern. Um, again, kind of came down. There was the racetrack. We covered it. Here's the, the line we put at the bottom for targets. It literally bounced right off the bottom of the target and went a bit higher and retraced. Um, so this was also a successful one. Uh, areas I'm looking at for this guy right now, um, I have to actually document that. Um, that's the area I'm looking at right now, this um, 125.70 area to 125.80 or 125.90 area. 
I like the drop. If this is able to kind of come back up again and rally back up into this kind of level of basing, um, I'd be looking to get, you know, get short that one. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, so that's a potential area I'm looking at. Uh, where are we at? Um, 125. It's about 70 pips. So it's one, one daily ATR. Um, let's see. Um, it's going to take more than a day. It's going to need a little bit of news, I think, to kind of to move this one. Um, but that's an area I'm looking for. Also looking for a break. Now the fact that, and if you guys can see this here, let me move this higher for you. You guys see that it went through our target area, our buying area. It went all the way to the very, very end and then came out of the top. Um, what that shows me is it didn't find buyers till the very, very bottom. They may actually be gone. So if we can get price to come down again, that same kind of Z pattern, um, or I guess the, I guess we'll call it the Harry Potter pattern, right? It's a, it's a backwards lightning bolt. Down, up, and down. Um, not the name that went off to write that down for later. The Harry, the Harry Potter, Harry Potter pattern. Um, to take the downside. Okay. Um, that's all I got for this one. Again, it's continuing to go lower with weakness. I think we're going to run into pound strength here. We have to rather soon. It's down to 125. Um, that's pretty low on the spectrum for this guy. Um, and again, eventually central banks step in and do some things. Uh, looking at dollar CAD. Um, dollar CAD a little bit whippy this week, right? Um, it kind of came down. The first was right here. We got this big pop up. And again, it was a parabolic candle. Uh, ATR was only 60. It moved much more than that. And what did it do? It retraced and tracked all the way back down again. And then literally spiked all the way back up again. This kind of craziness, right? Um, and again, looking at this, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Okay, and this is why it's so important to keep track of this. Okay. Here is your level of basing. Okay. Here was your basing, right? Price popped. It went sideways. It gave you a green, red, green pattern. It came and retested it and shot down. And that's where your target was. So price spiked up, it hit, and it dropped right back down again to the initiation of the move. Okay. This is also a news based move. Okay. Um, I actually like this one a bit lower. Um, the way that this one has been moving, um, I think this actually may go a bit lower. Um, again, this is kind of people will say, oh, it's running stops and taking things out. It's like, eh, yes and no. It was news based. I get it. It's not really a stop runner. Um, but I actually do like this to the downside. So for me, um, I have an alert set on a different machine. Um, when this breaks, this, I actually have it breaking at um, 130.30. Um, I have it alerting me um, when we get a break below and I want to see the pattern. Right now we have a red, a green, and a red. So we are in a confirmation to the downside. You do see the oscillator to negative four as well, showing us that we are, you know, short. And again, this new spike, this was an easy retra, you know, retest to back to the downside. Um, this retest was, let's see, you're talking about a 50 pip mover already. Okay. Again, nice little retest off of this kind of spike. All right. Um, so I am bearish this one, looking for that one for the week. Okay, Swiss has some news this week. Uh, Swiss is literally just still grinding higher. Um, we are back to where the original gap was. It just went slightly above. I'm still waiting for the magic number up here. Um, like I said, I don't trade this pair as often. I'm waiting to get back up into this kind of um, right around the parity level, this 199.85-ish area. The start of the initiation in this move, it did run into the wick behind the wall. You guys see this little wick behind the wall here, this first kind of push and retest. That's what it ran into. I do think it will grind a bit higher, though. Um, Again, this pair can get set off for any number of different reasons. Um, you know, world is great. Boom, it goes higher. So we'll 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 see. Um, we get you know, we, suddenly this week we get like North Korea shooting a missile or something because it's Fourth of July and you know we had a military parade, so they need to have a bigger one. You'll see it kind of spike back down again. But I'm waiting to get short on this one until we get back up closer to parity. Uh, last but not least, dollar yen. Okay, so dollar yen. You guys saw some movement. Um, again, kind of a very you know we are. Just like we were in that channel before, that's kind of what we're looking for here. Um, I would say that, you know, there's your top side, there's your bottom side of the channel. We are trying to push a bit higher. Um, I'm waiting till we get up into this 108.80 range before I start looking for shorts. I need to go a little bit more. Um, you know, the trade on the bottom side was here. Okay. Um, this was one that we grabbed last week. Okay. Here is your level of basing at the bottom. Here is your pop. Boom. It came up. It touched it. And again, this is kind of... This is kind of disheartening. This is hard to go through. But then again, we got a nice little pop on Friday and ended up over here. OK, so uh, this guy, I am looking to get a little bit more bearish. Um, again, I needed to get up into this one uh, 10880. Uh, then I'd be looking to take a short. Um, here is a nice little kind of an interesting fake out. This is a racetrack. I love to retrace these. But again, we pulled back, went higher. Um, didn't really get an entry um, until really until here. And again, a little bit of fake out. But again, it's a little bit too far. Great setup, one of my favorite setups to take, being a racetrack, but unfortunately, all the sideways movement really kind of messed it up. 
and uh, took us out of the trade before we even got into it. So, uh, and now we're just grinding higher until U.S. traders get in. So I expect that this will go higher today. Um, I think we'll get up into this area. Uh, and again, I have an alert set for 1880. Um, I will come back to the computer and start looking for short entries to uh, take this one. Uh, where I take it to also will depend on what type, what type of spike. If it does nothing but go green up, um, I'll go for the 50 pips down to this first base here uh, with a potential second target down here of 107.85-ish, Okay, the, the start of this last kind of spike. So target one will be here. Target two will be right down here. All right. So um, that is the last chart. So with that being said, if you guys have other questions, you guys are more than welcome to email me. Um, you guys can shoot me a message over at uh, support at Keep Trading Simple, and I respond pretty quickly. It goes right to my phone. You can guys go to the website if you guys click on this Discord. If you guys are familiar with Discord, it's a chat program that Microsoft uses. It is free to join us. You can ask questions. Um, we're just starting to migrate traders into it. Um, I found that that's the easiest way because if I can't answer it, one of my other trusted traders will. Uh, you can check out our website, keeptradingsimple.com or on Instagram. Again, Instagram profile is new. Uh, we're updating kind of different setups like racetracks, uh, news trades, uh, retracements. Um, I'm going to have to, again, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name that the Harry Potter trade. And um, that'll be up there as soon as well. Um, just a little bit more uh, definition. So definitely check us out. And uh, with that being said, guys, I will see you next Monday. Have a good trading week this week. If you're on vacation, enjoy yourself. And uh, I'll catch up with then. Take care.